MTV's Jackass defined a generation. Sometimes hilarious, other times dangerous or downright disgusting, the antics carried out by the ever-reckless crew left some serious marks, both physical and psychological. Here's a look at the lives that were damaged by the franchise. In 1998, Johnny Knoxville planted the seed that would become Jackass. At first, it was a simple article in which Knoxville wanted to use himself as a test subject for self-defense equipment. Think tasers, pepper spray, and a bulletproof vest. He told Maxim during an interview, A few magazines wanted the story, but nobody wanted the liability. He eventually sold the idea to Big Brother magazine, which turned the project into a video. With Spike Jones and Jeff Tremaine on board, the trio shopped the video around to networks and landed at MTV. Over the course of two decades, Knoxville managed to parlay his jackass success into a serious film career. He's appeared in movies like The Dukes of Hazzard, Elvis and Nixon, and Action Point, which he wrote and produced. Nonetheless, Jackass left him with a few battle scars. He revealed to GQ that, among a myriad of other injuries, he had to use a catheter for three years after botching a motorcycle stunt while filming MTV's tribute to Evil Knievel. As for his later work, 2018's Action Point was the source of four concussions. That's when he decided to throw in the towel, but not before sustaining broken bones, a brain hemorrhage, and another concussion after facing off with a live bull while filming Jackass 4. In an interview with GQ, he said, I can't afford to have any more concussions. I can't put my family through that. By the time Chris Rabb linked up with the creators of Jackass in 2000, he had already received acclaim within the skateboarding community for two stunt videos he filmed with Bam Margera and Ryan Dunn as part of the CKY crew. Though he may have been ready for the success, he wasn't ready for the culture of rampant substance abuse that it created, and the way his castmates habitually justified their addictions. In Page Six's Jackass profile, Rab revealed that he started taking painkillers for injuries sustained on set, but the show's, quote, obsessive lifestyle was a perfect storm for addiction. He said, Before you know it, you're just so caught up in it. Then what happens is people are like, Rab, you have a drinking problem. You're doing too many drugs. And you're like, I'm not as bad as this person and this person. And you're surrounded by a bunch of drug addicts and alcoholics, and you're just pointing the fingers at each other. He ultimately stepped away from the series once he started getting, quote, darker into drugs and drinking. He got a job waiting tables, as he'd blown through most of his jackass money by then, and started rebuilding his life. Today, he's sober. When it came to filming the first season of Jackass, Ryan Dunn dove right in, literally. His first stunt was diving into a tank of sewage. The first thing we shot on that trip was him jumping into the poo water. <laughs> it's the poo dive. Over the course of three seasons, the star made a name for himself by performing some of the show's more dangerous stunts, like stilt boxing or chugging an entire bottle of Jose Cuervo in less than a minute. He eventually graduated to the spin-off Viva La Bam and appeared in every Jackass film up until his 2011 death. Dunn's death is by far the show's biggest tragedy. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the star had a blood alcohol level that was more than twice the legal limit, and was driving 130 miles per hour when his Porsche flew over a guardrail and crashed into a tree not far from Bam Margera's hometown of Westchester, Pennsylvania. Per The Guardian, the car burst into flames, and both Dunn and the passenger, Jackass No. 2 production assistant Zachary Hartwell, were killed. Dunn's death sent shockwaves across the Jackass community. Chris Rabb, who'd been friends with Dunn since he was 12 years old, told Page Six that he was, quote, completely destroyed. Margera's mother, April, admitted that Dunn's death affected her family, quote, profoundly, and heartbreaking photos of Margera sobbing at the scene of the accident were splashed across tabloids. According to Daily News, the star said he'd never get over it. Zachary Hartwell's gig with Jackass was a career shift. 
According to Radar, the Jackass No. 2 production assistant was a Navy veteran who served in two tours of Iraq. In 2011, the night of Ryan Dunn's tragic drunk driving accident, the pair were reportedly celebrating a business deal. Per The Hollywood Reporter, Dunn was thought to have had around 11 drinks prior to driving Hartwell home. Hartwell was survived by his high school sweetheart Rachel. The pair tied the knot less than a year before the accident, and Dunn's girlfriend reportedly served as a bridesmaid. A source told Radar in an interview, "...now they are both widows. It is too sad for words." The source also claimed that Hartwell, quote, "...was not a big drinker at all." According to TMZ, Hartwell's parents ended up suing both Dunn's estate and the bar where the men were reportedly drinking. They claimed that Dunn was obviously overserved and that Barnaby's Westchester was, quote, negligent for giving the clearly intoxicated Jackass star more drinks. They also claimed that Dunn was, quote, reckless and negligent because he was operating a vehicle while intoxicated and driving at extremely dangerous speeds. At the time of producing this video, it's unclear how the lawsuit actually played out. Bam Margera has struggled with alcoholism for years, bouncing in and out of rehab and grabbing headlines for worrying behavior, including numerous social media rants and a bizarre incident where he was arrested for trespassing after reportedly claiming he had been hired to catch a hotel patron's wife in the midst of an affair. Without Margera's MTV show, he may have never picked up a single drink. In an interview with Dr. Phil, Margera admitted that he never touched alcohol or drugs until he was in his early 20s. As a professional skateboarder, he needed, quote, the balance of being on a handrail, but with Jackass, alcohol helped him perform. He confessed to the Philadelphia Inquirer in 2017, "...my job is to do dumb jackass sh and the more shots of Crown Royal I'd do, the braver I'd be. Drinking helped me get paid." The death of Ryan Dunn exacerbated Margera's substance use, and he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and bulimia. He told Vice that at his lowest point, his diet was almost exclusively booze. At the time of producing this video, he still seems to be struggling. TMZ claimed the star was fired from Jackass 4 after breaking contract stipulations regarding his substance use. When asked about the situation, Johnny Knoxville told GQ, "...I just want him to get better." Margera's ex-wife, Missy Rothstein, knew Bam before the fame. According to the New York Times, they became friends in sixth grade. Though they dated other people, they reconnected in 2005 and tied the knot two years later. Their path to matrimony was documented in their spin-off series, Bam's Unholy Union. And while Rothstein knew she married a jackass, she didn't expect him to actually act like one. In an interview with Howard Stern, Margera revealed that, quote, "...as soon as they got married, Rothstein tried to get him to grow up and stop drinking." As he recalled, "...drinking helps me do the stupid shit I do, so like, there's the door." According to Radar, the pair started having troubles two years later. Around that time, Margera was hospitalized after a four-day alcohol bender and told TMZ that marriage problems were to blame. He said, "...I may get a divorce. Booze helps." On top of that, Rothstein's first year of marriage was marred by a compromising photo leak. Margera, who took the photos, told Howard Stern that only the topless shots were supposed to be used, but someone ended up leaking them all. Needless to say, when Rothstein's divorce was finalized in 2012, she literally threw a party. According to Radar, she tweeted, "...finally free. Who wanna come to my divorce party, haha?" -ha. The celebration was even capped off with multicolored balloons that spelled out the words, "...just divorced." Steve-O has been sober for more than a decade, but Jackass nearly killed him, and not just the stunts. The show's hard and fast lifestyle enabled his descent into risky substance abuse, something he'd been navigating since childhood. On the show, Steve-O was undeniably fearless, seemingly performing every stunt thrown his way. Off the show, he lived by the same principles. The stuntman started drinking before the age of 12 when his mother gave him, quote, "...just a little bit of booze to quell his crying," he admitted during an appearance on In Depth with Graham Bensinger. Though he was already into drugs and alcohol before Jackass, GQ reports that he got, quote, "...heavier into both, trying ketamine, nitrous, and PCP." 
At one point, he even drank aluminum cleaner. He told Bensinger, that would bring about some pretty disturbing incidents. At the height of his addiction, Stevo found himself barging into his drug dealer's home and snorting cocaine that he knew was contaminated with HIV-positive blood, though he miraculously didn't contract the virus. Jackass almost killed Stevo, but it also saved him. According to Access, everything changed when he sent an email that, quote, hinted at suicide to a handful of his closest friends. Johnny Knoxville staged an intervention, and barring a 2008 relapse, the star has been sober ever since. Brandon Novak was an addict long before appearing in Jackass No. 2 and Jackass 3D, and his unwitting co-stars actually helped him avoid recovery. They made their best effort, with Margera once booting Novak out from the studio during a taping of their Sirius XM show, Radio Bam, for bringing drugs. If Novak was going to get better, however, he had to do it himself. In an interview with Gorilla Flicks, Novak revealed that he did heroin for 21 years and was first arrested for possession at the age of 17. He tried rehab. He actually tried it multiple times, but he kept bouncing back to the same crowd of people, the ones he knew would enable him. He said, I would outthink myself out of the programs, rehabs, and meetings, thinking I could just do it a different way. And then with Bam and the crowd I ran with, you know, everyone liked to party. So if people wanted to be friends with me, they came up to me and handed me drugs. At his lowest point, Novak was homeless. His mother had filed a restraining order so as to not enable his addiction, and he started selling his body on the streets. At one point, he even contracted hepatitis C after shooting heroin with a used needle he found on the floor of an abandoned house. He explained the full extent of his despair in an interview with Fox 29 Philadelphia. You know, so at 38 years old, I came to after being on life support for seven days. I was the kind of heroin addict who wanted to kill himself on a daily basis. I just didn't want to hurt myself in the process. He entered rehab one more time and has stayed sober ever since. Danger Aaron McGeehy joined the Jackass cast when the show was picked up by MTV, but he already knew his way around career-defining injuries. According to The Mirror, a broken neck ended his professional snowboarding career, but it appeared to do almost nothing to deter him from performing dangerous Jackass stunts, including the things he didn't want to do, like drinking his own pee or being chased by bulls. As he explained to Page Six, the cast was all competing for screen time, which pushed stunts to become more extreme the longer the show went on. During all two decades of Jackass, Aaron admitted that he's had, quote, many, many injuries, including 25 surgeries, nine of which were on his knees, three broken backs, and his infamous Lamborghini tooth pull. He's never taken it lightly, he told Page Six. The pain is real from the surgeries. That's the other thing. With the way that we live as humans now with sports and stuff we do, it's almost like people live like it's a video game. I'm here to tell you it's not. You only get one body. Take care of it." McGeehy is testing his one body one final time with Jackass 4. In the decade between flicks, he also worked as a tour photographer for Eagles of Death Metal and appeared in the sketch comedy series Portlandia. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-4357. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255.